Oh, wow. How, how old are the others? I've got a 18 year old, 16, 14, 13. I've got a five year old daughter and a two year old son. Mate, you'd be a fantastic dad. You're a good man. Good evening, Australia. Welcome to the show. I'm Michael Kazilny. Thank you very much for the pledge of your company. Tough times never last. Uh, uh, if you're going through some issues tonight, love and best wishes. Remember, tomorrow's another day. And what we also have to remember is that life comes with a mixture of, um, you know, the good things and the bad. I think that's um, something we should always remember, that life's not always going to be rosy. Uh, we are going to go through some difficult times. And sometimes there's nothing to fix. Sometimes we just have to go through it. It might be for a few days, might be for a few months or even a few years. But remember, things always change. And with a positive attitude, we usually get good outcomes outcomes. Uh, I've got two great gentlemen on the couch tonight. Both have done um, uh, terms in prison for alcohol-related offences, but uh, both have turned their lives around and they're real decent, uh, authentic blokes. Thanks, David, and thank you, Jeff, Pleasure. for coming on Thanks the couch. Us. Two uh, fearless gladiators from Nauru. Yeah. Yes. Tell me about Nauru, because many people in Australia don't know about Nauru. What's it like over there? Nice laid back place to live, small tiny island in the central Pacific. Yeah. Um, it's about 21 square kilometres, so it only takes about 40 minutes to drive around. Amazing. Yep. And everybody knows each other, Jeff, do they? Pretty, pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Population's about, what, 10,000? 10, 10,000. And how many churches? Five. Five, Five different churches. Is that amazing? <laughs> well, probably more now, I'm not sure. Because they have a good faith there, don't they? They're. they're Yes. They're, they're I wish there was five universities, not five churches. It would be probably... Um... <laughs> and, Jeff, you, um, you came here, you went to boarding school at, yeah. um, at uh, uh, Mentone there. Uh, you were sent here for a better, better education. Yeah. Yeah, how, how old were you when you came? Oh, I was in, yeah, seven, so yeah. 12, 13, about yeah. that age. Yeah. And then um, um, what, what were your plans? You were going to become a uh, doctor or something, right? Uh, no, well, we all were sent down here for education and then go back home. Yeah. That's the plan, but um, I was fortunate enough. I fell in love here. Yeah. And I met my wife here. And, oh, uh, good. So I never, never tended to go back. You're married now, Jeff? Yeah, married with kids. How, how old are the kids? I've got, uh, I've got four boys and a baby girl and a little baby boy, oh, two-year-old. Oh, wow. So how, got, how old are the others? I've got a 18 year old, 16, 14, 13. I've got a five year old daughter and a two year old son. Mate, you'd be a fantastic dad. You're a good man. And uh, uh, six months in prison you spent, yeah? For yes. um, uh, oh, there was cool. a big, big brawl. It was an affray case, was it? Yeah. Yeah. So. And we'll talk about that. But uh, Dave, how do you know the, the the gladiator here? You do you know each other from uh, back home, or do the, do the families know each other? Uh, growing up, I've seen him around the island, yeah, you know, as you do with a lot of the people there. Did he have all the uh, the girls chasing him in those days because of his uh, bodybuilding career? Oh, uh, I can't <laughs> say. I think I was too young. No, I wasn't like that back then. <laughs> so, David, what, what, you, you were living there. What did mum and dad do? What do people do on the island? My my mother, well, she's a school teacher at a primary school, teaching yeah. uh, grade twos and threes. Amazing. Uh, my father was a stevedore, so he worked at the boat harbour there, um, loading the phosphate onto the ship. Hard workers. Offloading containers and stuff. On yeah. The island. Are they both gone, Dave? Uh, both of them have passed away. God bless them. And yours too? Same here. Jeez. It's, um, so there's no, we don't have any reason to go back anymore. No. No, that's, that's <laughs> tough, isn't it? That's, I mean, that's a, 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 a challenge in itself, isn't it? Yes. Now, David, you're still suffering, my friend. Um, you, you, you've gone through some um, difficult issues. So no prior convictions. Most people um, go to court and have like six pages of priors, but David got sentenced to three years imprisonment at the County Court of Victoria, I think in 2013, was it? Um, that's the time I was released. Um, oh, released. I got um, arrested and imprisoned in um, 2010, late 2010. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was in there for about a month release on bail, and uh, whilst I was on bail, I had to do um, about six months worth of uh, signing-ins and breathalysers on a daily basis. Oh. And uh, went back to county court and yeah, pled guilty to the charges. With no prior convictions? No prior convictions. And how long was the sentence? It was a three year and four month um, on the top. Yeah. And um, I did about 18 months of that on the inside. At which prison? Uh, firstly, I was at Manganit in the violence unit. Mm -hmm. 
And then after that, on my way out, I went to Darangong, which is an open camp. Mm. Oh, prison. yeah, because of your So your I got my, um, got my forklift license and just done everything I needed. Just, just yeah. Set myself up when I come out, find work. David, what did you expect when you went to the county court? What um, did your um, lawyer promise you? I, was, I had no idea. No. Um, I just went in there blind. I was just told, look, these are the charges and you're looking to do time. It must have been quite a serious incident. I, I mean, I, it's, it's a sad thing, but I'm just trying to get it out on the table. You, um, you got drunk one night, violently really drunk, and um, was your wife having an affair? Um, my ex-girlfriend... Um, she was having an affair. Um, we, we, she broke up with me um, previous day, and the next day a friend of mine took me out to go drinking yeah. at another friend's house. Um, Which pub? Helen Pub? No, nah, this was at another mate's house in Dandenong. Right. And there was about, I think, 10, 10 or more casks of fruity lexia oh. on the table I between the five, five or six of yeah. us there. Oh, mate, what, what time of the year was it? Was it uh, warm? Uh, it, was, it was pretty warm. Yeah. But I yeah, we were just out there in the backyard getting stuck into it. So from the afternoon until the next day. Yeah. So by that time next day, I didn't know from what's up and down, you know. Because you would have been so angry after, you know, so the lead up to the breakup. So yeah. you, went, you went back home to where you used to live? Um, one of the guys I drank with was, um, was her brother-in-law. And um, he would say, do you remember all those other times that we used to go out, blah, 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 and um, we're going to the, the other boyfriend's house? So I lost it. And uh, next thing I remember, I woke up in Frankston police cells and they told me what I'd done. What did you do? Um, a lot. Smashed up the uh, caravan or the cabin that they were staying in. Um, assaulted her, her, her boyfriend, and... Um, probably about nine other Good Samaritans that come try to stop me. So I got stuck into all of them. And also um, probably try to get stuck into the, the policemen that tried to stop me. You're a big fella, and did, you would have copped a few too, though, if they all attacked you. Oh, I couldn't remember. Oh, I couldn't remember. No. It's just um, the Good Samaritans uh, wrapping my, literally wrapping mm. my legs in chain. Oh. And, and just from the way you're talking and what you've said in the break, you, you know, you look back and um, you feel, uh, you, you feel um, so remorseful about the whole thing, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. You know, it was, out, I was out, it was out of my character, you know. I'm just basically mm. working and drinking and then... We might talk about up. how you turned your life around, David, but it's amazing how you've um, turned the corner. Congratulations and thanks for coming on. And thank viewers, you. thank you very much for watching. We'll be back very shortly with these two great men. Jeff and David, don't go away. Tell me about that incident at the uh, the pub. Um, a friend of mine needed help to go and smash someone. And uh, so we got ready, we got drunk, and by the time we got there, you know, I just can't remember a thing. Oh, like, no. And, um, yeah. Well, if I, was, if I was a trouble, I'd bring you along as well. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so just just pointed the, the person that we're after and yeah. then just walked in there and just, just smashed him, punched him, smashed everyone next to him. Um, even the barmaid came in. I, I, I don't know, you no. know, like... I didn't even know it was a lady. She, she Which pub was it? Uh, Packingham. And and it just turned into a, a, a big all in brawl. Yeah. And um, you know the You lady. were you were fearless in those days. You were drinking a lot, were well, you? Well, yeah, I was just you know whiskey. I drank a bottle of uh, she was real. You were like the Terminator. You just um, <laughs> um, at, in those days. Were you married then? Yes. Oh, you were. You know, and you know, like that's the one thing I really regret because my you know it was my wife and kids that suffered me going mm. away, but. And at that time, you know, my daughter was only two years old, so... So the guy who, beat, uh, who got the, cop, um, the, the beating, uh, what did he do wrong? He was... Um... He was apparently um, messing with his, my friend's sister, younger okay. sister, and, yeah. and, I mean, not, not, not in a good way. Yeah. So, yeah. so he was furious about it. A bit of natural justice there. Yeah. Um, and, um, a, uh, he went there to give him an offer too good to refuse, and then a policeman came up from behind. And uh, I did, oh, I didn't even know there was a policeman. Like yeah. I said, I turned around, I grabbed him. Gave him a quick jab in the face. 
no, I grabbed, I, well, I grabbed his shirt like I was getting ready to punch him and then yeah. um, he just knocked me out with his, with the baton. Did he? Yeah. Knocked your uh, tooth out? Knocked my tooth out. And, oh my uh, God. And then I woke up at the police station. You got, and what were the charges? Assault. Uh, a fray? Uh, yeah. Was, a hamburger with a lot. <laughs> yeah, the assault with a lot. And then, uh, assault with a lot. Well, and criminal damages and all that because, you know, I was of smashing course. the place down. I. And Jeff, yeah. not many prize either, bro. No, before that it was just all drink driving, um, you know, lit, not really intoxicated, but just yeah. yeah, just driving without a license. Isn't it amazing, and, folks? From um, you know, from uh, St. Bede's private school to, um, to you know, sort of, and all of a sudden, um, bang, the, the grog once again. It's really it's the devil's curse, isn't it? So many people um, wake up in the morning and go, God, I can't believe what I've done. Whether it's culpable driving and. They might have killed somebody or the domestic violence they've punched up on their partner. And, uh, yeah, David, um, it didn't end that, end there. So you, you, you did your um, prison time. Yeah. And um, you just kept to yourself there, did you? Yes, um, got locked up and um, kept to myself. Um, did some furniture making courses. Got my Y card. Um, concentrated mainly on the, uh, the industries there, on um, carpentry and all that. Yeah. They had woodwork there, they were making spa bars, um, sides for the panels for the uh, spa bars. And um, yeah, that kept me busy throughout the several months I was in Marganite. And um, yeah, just done a, um, the drug and alcohol course that they had there. It's an intensive program. Yeah. So we're just in a group with all the other boys and we all tell our individual stories how we got in jail. And um, clinicians gave us some pointers of how to, to deal with that sort of um, behaviour and stuff. It's amazing how you use that discipline to those causes. Most blokes go in there go stuff this. And, and it's amazing how, um, uh, you know, the binge drinking sessions can uh, really turn our life around. A couple of weeks ago we had a uh, uh, quite a high profile criminal lawyer called Graham Alford who um, uh, was uh, very successful um, in uh, our Melbourne courts and then he uh, got onto the grog. He started drinking uh, 30 pots uh, every uh, day and then he did an armed robbery and ended up doing seven years in jail back in the old Pentridge days. And he said, Michael, I was sitting there myself thinking, how in the hell did I end up here after having done a course at Melbourne University and this and that? Did you think that when you, you're in your prison cell, you thought, what the F and am I doing here? How did I get to this? Yes. Yeah? I get a, you got a lot of time to think yeah. when, um, when you're in prison. So um, in a way, it's a good thing. Yeah. Because even though you, you're, when you're out here, yeah. it's just too much going on. You don't have time to really think, you know what I, I mean? Agree, like, Jeff. I agree, Jeff. I, I really agree. I think self reflection is so important, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we're, we're all running around, uh, you, you know, um, overwhelmed, so much stuff going through our minds. And um, uh, we've got to get, go, get off the merry go round every now and then, yeah. whether it's in a hospital bed or in prison, and we, we get time to reflect, do a stock take on our mm. lives, you know? And Absolutely. that's the only place to do it, like, you know, or apart from going away in the mountains, like, yeah. you know, where there's absolutely no yeah. one. Yeah. But everyone's so needy, aren't they? Everyone needs the yeah. crowd to exist. Not, so, not many people can uh, be by themselves, can they? So it's funny because you walk in there, you, you all the anxieties and all the stress. Yeah. You're missing your family. And then you get to the point where you don't have any more choice, you know, you know and then you realise that, what am I stressing about? Because, you, you know, you have to give in anyway. You get mm. to give up. But you just surrender. Surrender. But then you realise that, you know, if... if if I'm surviving, I'd still be happy right now. You, yeah. you know, you force yourself to be happy. Yeah. Nothing else really, you know, all that stress and all that anxiety, it was just all, it wasn't real. I, That's you know, so true, just, folks, what um, Jeff is saying is that, you know, we're running around worrying all the time, you know, getting the bigger house and getting the car and getting the nice suits and collecting more money for the mortgage. All of a sudden, we're living for the house and the mortgage and then we get a bit older and then we die and we think, wow, you know, where was all the fun? I think, I think um, you know, the greatest thing uh, anybody can do is take full responsibility for all the stuff in their lives and uh, be cheerful, you know? Show loving kindness to others and smile a lot more. And, uh, yeah, still, we have to live in a house and drive cars and stuff, but don't make that your primary purpose of life and collect more for the house to show others how good you are, you know? I think these days people love authentic people and um, we really have to embrace simplicity. We'll be back very shortly with these two great men, uh, David and Jeff. We'll see you shortly.
Thank you very much for watching. Love and best wishes. If you're going through some difficult issues, you know, there's so many people going through relationship breaks up, up, ups at the moment, people taking intervention orders and, um, you know, it's all about um, the ego. I'm right, you're wrong. There's an old saying, uh, you can't convince a person of their will, they'll be of the same opinion still. All this arguing, quarreling, I think this, I think that. You know, at the end of the day, people are gonna have their own opinions and sometimes we just have to pull back a bit and show a bit of kindness and, um, you know, just apologize for the incident, whether that's our fault or not. You know what I mean? Um, better to be kind than to be right. That's a good saying to have in the back of your mind. Better to be kind than to be right. That'll avoid a lot of arguments. Uh, Paul David, he's a gentle giant, did three years, um, uh, got sentenced for three years at the county court in Melbourne for a, uh, um, a serious assault uh, whilst on the grog. Um, when he came out, he somehow the law of attraction works, I think, David, because I really believe that um, somehow if we think about something, it expands. So you then meet another lady, um, fall yes. in love. Yes, I did. And um, she has an affair. Uh, we're in, well, up to now, um, we're in a seven year relationship after jail, seven years and um, Probably about two and a half years, the last two and a half years, he had been having an affair. And um, we've got three wonderful children. Um, How old are they, Dave? We've got a five-year-old daughter. God bless them. Three-year-old son and a two-year-old daughter. Wow, that's a miracle. Yep. So at the moment, we've got an intervention order out on me. Um, if I wind back, um, I think three months now, that we've been separated. Oh, you uh, go Left through home that. and... Um, Within thought that I'd be coming back the next day, just let her call off, and uh, her boyfriend moved in. Oh, so, um, and assaulted him. Oh, and uh, last month uh, he assaulted me oh, at no. a mutual friend's house. So um, with that consequential thinking, I was telling you about you know whether I fight him and I get locked up, or do I put hands behind my back and just take it? Oh, so, uh, is he yeah. from Nauru as well? Uh yes. Yeah. I'm not really Was he a mate from way back? Uh, I think he's about third or fourth cousin. Mm. Mm. And now he gets kicked out and he's homeless. Oh, he's no. The cops, and, uh, David, God bless. put an so. intervention order on him and um, about a week later, she put an intervention order on me. Oh, so you're so, going through um, the fire at the moment. and um, 5th of April, we've got to go back to uh, the court. Oh, and, um, gee, it's good that, he's, that, that, that you've got the uh, the bro here, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm here, you know. You're here for support. I'm here to support him. And, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, tomorrow we're starting the gym. Oh, good. And I've, where, where have you been staying, Dave? Oh, I've been staying at um, Osnum House in um, Cross Road from the Royal Children's Hospital. Um, it's run by Vinnie's. Oh. It's a 60-bed men's um, accommodation. So oh. we have our own rooms, three meals a day. So homeless people go there. So it's mainly men. And uh, they got the support services there. Um, yeah. They've got me linked in with a, um, a counsellor. Yeah. To talk about my separation issues and all yeah. that. And, uh, they're and, helping me a lot. And will you get to see the kids? Well, on the 5th of April, go to court and um, see if I can contest this um, intervention order she's put on me. Yeah. Because um, I feel it's, um, I don't know whether she's Fabricated. done it out of spite. Well, he hasn't or done nothing, really. I mean, he, she had an affair and, and the boyfriend bashed him up and then... So now yeah, it feels like, like a bit of um, alienation, alienating. So, yeah. yeah, and that's so true, folks, isn't it? I've, I've been around the criminal justice system for over 30 years, you know, and, um, and I used to see um, a lot of um, intervention orders, um, you know, fabricated. And it's a fact people use it to, um, to you know, keep the house and, and, and have affairs. And all of a sudden the person comes home and but I didn't do anything, but you made me feel unwelcome. And um, and so the intervention order is very easy to take out in the courts, but uh, that's why it's good that uh, there's another hearing for um, that evidence to get tested because the, um, the truth always comes out. So I certainly wish you, David, all the very best. And I'm Thank sure you. that everything will fall into place, my friend. Hopefully. You will see your beautiful children. You're a great father and a very good man too. Um, otherwise this bloke wouldn't be sitting next year. Nah. Yeah. And, and everything always falls into place. Um, and I think we, if we remember that, that it's all impermanent, you remember when you went to the county court and you thought, oh my God, how am I going to get through this? And then we just got through it. And all of a sudden we think, wow, 
a positive came out of that, didn't it? Yes, a lot of positive. I always think that everything happens for our maximum benefit, that we all, God or the universe, gives well, these you know, Well, you know what we say in prison, yeah. like the we'll gather around and everyone will be talking about, oh, what are you in for? Yeah. Oh, you know, everyone's blaming everyone. You know, there's the cop artist, the missus, yeah. that. But the, one of the long timers, he just came in and said to us, we all know why we're in here. We're all in here because of karma, because of our sins. Yeah. So, and I believe in that because it's everything that we've, you know, we've done in life that it's wrong. It's all caught up mm. and it's a good thing to, to deal with it. And cleansing. It's a cleansing. Isn't it? and, and, and that's so true, folks, isn't it? Um, uh, I think whatever we do in life is just do our best. And whatever we do in for work, uh, we've got to do it to our utmost. And not play small, you know. We, we really have to, and I think the most important thing is to be in the service of others and see everybody like like brothers and sisters and not judge each other. There's so many um, um, critics, bullies, and, and uh, you know, people judging people. I think um, that's why so many people are depressed because they're worried about the opinions of other people. But we should just go out there and smile a bit more. And, um, you know, really, I think the main aim in life is to become totally uh, loving human beings and exceptional human beings and, um, and realise that we're all perfectly imperfect. We've all sinned, we've all made mistakes, and we've all done things we're not proud of. And I certainly have. And, um, you know, sometimes we just have to smash the ego on the ground and realise we're not perfect. But the people who think they're perfect, who wear the masks, they're usually the ones that... Yep. are the backstabbers, isn't it? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I found out. But yeah, David, everything will be fine with you if um, uh, if you just realise that all the good things never last, all the bad things can't last either. So yes. it's just a matter of writing it out and there'll be some beautiful lessons in this as well. So yes. no more grog in your life? Or oh, just a little bit? Occasionally I'll be here and there. But I'll come um, and visit you at the But starting the tomorrow, you, I'll probably no more grog because no. we're starting the gym tomorrow. And well, well, it's... Oh, it's no you know, problem. I want to recommend that to everyone. Like, yeah, tell us about everyone that's going to go to prison. Yeah. they know that hit the gym. It's, okay, you know, it's it'll it'll. So make you, sure you, you want more people to go to prison? For, could be more crimes. All the young blokes to do more drugs and um, well, meet a few more people. No, no. <laughs> so prison's not cool, is it? No, it's not. It's not. It's cool. not. But it's how you take it. You know, like yeah. it, it depends on the person. You know, yeah. you, but um, I'm ch talking about what the positive things you can do there. And for me, it's a gym. I love that. Gentlemen, David, God bless you. Everything's going to work out. We'll be here for you for support. Uh, Jeff, thanks for coming in. It was lovely to see you and your, pleasure. your bro today. I'll help him out too. But uh, viewers, thank you very much. Love and best wishes. We'll see you next week. And always remember, tough times never last, but tough people do. I'm Michael Gazzelny. Good night.